I spent seven days building my own SaaS. It's gonna help developers win at life by using AI. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. All the fun and all the pain and an actual product at the end. They say developers can build anything. Well, I'm a developer and I wanna build just something. I wanna build a SaaS and I'm not really sassy per se, but a SaaS is just a software as a service and it seems easy enough to build. You just need some front end, maybe some back end, and maybe you need it to work without bugs. We'll see along the way. But I wanna build something really cool. Recently, I checked out GitHub Copilot and it uses AI tech. It's really cool AI tech that auto completes what you're writing. And I wanted to use some of their tech to build a SaaS. A number of tools maybe for developers or something like that, because I'm a little bit of a tool myself and whenever I jump into a problem, I always have to Google it. And if there was an easier way for me not to have to Google the same things over and over, like how to perform a Git merge, or for example, how to, you know, just do basic commands or even regex. Regex just blows my mind with some of the syntax. So I'm gonna try and build a tool around that. Now, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take you on this journey where I'm trying to solve these problems of building a SaaS. This will be everything like trying to build the front end and the back end, trying to design it and everything in between. So let's jump into my very first day of trying to do this. So the first thing I need to do is get access to some AI tools. There are lots out there. Google has their own machine learning suite. So does Amazon and even Microsoft themselves. But this isn't what got me excited in the first place. What really I enjoyed was GitHub Copilot. And that was made by a company called OpenAI. They created their own AI tech called GPT-2 and now also GPT-3, which created the model that they're using, which is I think called Codex, that they have for developers using VS Code. That's what I wanted to use to create some of these tools. So I tried to jump onto their website and unfortunately, even though there are companies called OpenAI, you can't just jump in there and get access and sign up. You actually have to go through a wait list and a process. So I did just that and I waited and waited and eventually I did get in. So now here I am inside of their playground and I'm gonna try and see if some of these ideas that I have around building tools with AI actually even work. So let's try them out. I jumped on the OpenAI website to try and figure out how it all works. I was a little scared at first because sometimes documentation can be terrible on some developer websites. But honestly, the OpenAI documentation is some of the best I've seen so far. It actually even reminds me of Stripe documentation, which is world class. But this does not mean I know what I'm doing. I jumped into their playground system and I was overwhelmed with all these different things like models, response, temperature, top P, frequency, presency. I was just at a loss. So I jumped into their examples. Here it shows off some of the things you can build with OpenAI and for me, I wanted to kick things off with a regex completer. I played around with a lot of different settings and prompts until I got a number of things working, like a JavaScript chatbot and even the regex. So it means that it is possible. Seems like there is some cool merit to this idea around creating natural language to solve programming problems that we all have. But let's have a look at the next most important step in building this SaaS, and that is to register the domain name. And to do that, I need a business name. And that is one of the hardest things to do. I thought about all different types of options and I came up with a name called Subwriter. Or was it Subeditor? I can't remember, but I immediately went to register. There's new domain names out there called .ai. So I jumped on and registered a .ai domain. And actually then after spending, I think two, three hundred dollars, I decided no. No, I don't like this domain name. I need to register another domain name. One of the things that I've been doing recently is building Enhance UI, which is a book for developers to learn design. So I thought I might as well keep up the trend and create Enhance AI, which can be a bunch of tools for developers to use AI to improve their daily jobs, write blogs and stuff like that. So let's register that domain name as well. Now that we've got this done, we can look at the hardest part of creating any SaaS product as a developer, and that is to create the logo. 
Now, for a logo, it's gonna have to be something amazing. When people look at this logo, it has to have the representation of developers and tools and open AI and all of that. So what I did was put some circles and squares together and here's the logo. Next up, we need to create a landing page so that when people have a look at this product, they're more inclined to try it out and even purchase it. To do this, I'm gonna jump onto Figma and we're gonna create a design based off the logo. What I wanna do is pull in some of those colors from the logo, some of those shapes like the squares and the circles, and I wanna create a design that sort of gives people an idea of how the tool works. So I might center it with a nice box and give them an example of how maybe it can explain code and what it's doing, as well as have lots of call to actions for people to sign up. This is the design I sort of came up with. It's nothing too fancy and I'll probably continue to play around with it, but at least it's up and running. So the next thing we have to do is actually code it. So I'm gonna code it in just some basic HTML and CSS. So let's try and do that right now. So I opened up VS Code, installed Tailwind CSS and started coding it all from my Figma design. And in no time I was done. I don't often have nightmares, but last night I had a nightmare that I'm gonna have to write out every single individual line of code for this SAS. Now that's sometimes an interesting take as a developer because you enjoy coding, but sometimes it's just too much. So I'm gonna try and use a page builder, and please don't judge me when I say this, I'm gonna use Webflow. I'm gonna see if it can redesign some of these Tailwind designs inside there, and if it takes me as long or quicker, just as a test. And if in this case it's easier, I might just swap the whole landing page to Webflow. And then when we actually build the app, I'll then definitely build that on React. But for the landing page, it's gonna be changed all the time. And I just think that React might be overkill to build this thing. Now it's time to build the front end and the back end, the best parts. Let's work with the front end to start off with. Let's use create React app for that. And I'll just start building that. And at the same time, I also need a backend to do even basic stuff like logins. So let's use our favorite, Node, Express, and Mongo. I might use the cloud version of Mongo just because later I want to make sure that it persists if I'm gonna scale it, but it's a traditional route for building any SaaS, so let's just get started with that. Next, we'll need a payment processor, like for example, eWay or PayPal or even Stripe because you do not want to store credit card information yourself. So I decided to go with Stripe because they're a popular one and I do want to do subscriptions, so that should be easy to set up. It wasn't easy to set up, but now that it's done, then it's all working and every time someone jumps in, they can do a free trial to test out the product before they fully sign up and commit, which is something you wanna do because no one wants to purchase something immediately without actually trying it out these days. Next, we need a place to host this entire system, both the front end and the back end, because it's not gonna host itself. So we're gonna do that on today's sponsor, which is Linode. Linode is a place where you can get dedicated or shared VPSs or domain names or firewalls or anything in between, even storage. So what I'm gonna do is connect up our new domain name, Enhance AI, to Linode. And then I'm also gonna create a VPS on Linux and start that up with a firewall and a couple of other things and get the whole system running on there. Then we're gonna test out to make sure it works. So let's do that right now. You can check out Linode in the description below and you can use my coupon to get a $100 voucher as well if you sign up. Okay, it's done and ready to be launched. So let's do that right now. It's in the link in the description below and here's what it can do. Once you log in, you get a number of tools such as things like interpret code, which can explain different code segments for you based off what the syntax is or fix code, which does something similar, but this case debugs your code and fixes up the errors that might be there. There's also commands, like if you're looking for a bash command or a hyper terminal command, it just gives you what you're looking for. The clean code tool basically takes a big lot of code and fixes up to almost a single line, nice and simple. We also have convert code, which can take code for say React or Vue and then convert it to a different type of language or framework. We have natural language to regex, which is one of my favorites, and even a tool here to fix your grammar if you're writing out different content or emails just to make it sound proper. 
there are a whole lot of natural language options here, like rephrasing a sentence to be more excited, or for example, even trying to shorten a long paragraph that just might be a little bit too long to read down to maybe a single sentence. Of course, you can do the opposite too. If you need to extend out a paragraph that just isn't long enough, you can create a lengthened paragraph option here where it just adds more content to what you've already written. There are other tools here in the section such as creating an introduction to maybe an article you're writing so that if you're stuck, it just gives you some support there to create that. Also, if you want to create an outline for your article, you can do that too. Essentially creating all the main high level key points you should talk about based on the article description. There's other cool things as well, like creating a to-do list from maybe an email or a piece of text, or even creating something here like a job ad based on some basic information you want to provide. These are really interesting options of what AI tech can do these days, and it can be extended even further, like even trying to raise what common questions people might ask based on some piece of text, which is a pretty cool one. Since I do a lot of YouTube videos, I also made a series of YouTube tools here. Things like generating titles for videos, or for example, trying to have some good YouTube tags to attach to a video as well. All of these tools are useful for YouTubers, even one here that helps you create the script for a video if you're trying to figure out the high level points that you need to talk about. One of the biggest features here is going to be called Enhanced Doc, which will be essentially helping you write content based off the article or the blog you're trying to create. The AI tool can create introductions for you, can create outlines for you, and these are automatically generated of the information you've provided already. In this example, I'm just creating an article for JWTs, as well as a nice outline to get me up and running. The high level introduction is done, and if I want, I can create a secondary introduction to get things kicked off for the actual work itself. And as soon as I finish off a sentence or need a new one created, I can automatically use the AI tool to generate that content for me. So it's essentially like GitHub Copilot for code, but this time for written content. 